All right, so like I mentioned in the last video near the end, there are a couple, well, actually I didn't Act I didn't mention this in the video, but I was talking about it in the comments. Uh, there are a couple issues with the uh, new DMG IPS kit, uh, but there are also a few questions regarding the install. Uh, so I want to see if I can't uh, kill two birds with one stone. Um, two Game Boys, two more Game Boys. Still have this one here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and install the kit in this Game Boy here. Uh, but we're going to do it completely different than we did last time. Uh, and we're also going to test it in this Game Boy here to see if motherboard revision makes any difference whatsoever. Now, I don't recall which revision this one is. And normally you can see through that little gap there. But I've already been inside this Game Boy. There was a ton of corrosion that I cleaned up. And there's just no text on the board in that spot anymore. So I don't remember, but it doesn't really matter too much because we'll try it out with this one, and this Game Boy is the latest revision. It's uh, also kind of worn off, and you can't, can't really see it, but I've been inside this one, so I know what it looks like. Uh, but anyway, there is a... Um... <clears throat> I want to see if we can't get one of these screens installed using the tabs instead of having to tape the screen in. I think that might make a difference. Okay, so this Game Boy, I don't really want to uh, scrap this front board. Because the screen in here is perfectly fine. Uh, in fact, this is the screen that I did the, uh, this is the Game Boy Pocket screen. Um, I definitely want to use this shell because I don't mind cutting into this shell at all. But, I, yeah. I have another Game Boy that, uh, the shell I don't really want to cut into, but the insides are a little bit less than ideal. So, I'm going to end up mix and matching, but I'll do a lot of that off screen. So this I'm going to save for another install, or for uh, my other Game Boy. Which means I'm not going to have a speaker for this Game Boy. Or at least, I'm not going to have the right size speaker. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this one. This one was an earlier model Game Boy, so it used all GIS screws. This is a later model Game Boy, as it's a Play It Loud one, so it uses tri-point screws. So, bear with me. throwing shit around. Um, bear with me while I get this apart. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. Won't be needing the front half. Not for now, at least. Uh, so as you can see here, I had a lot of corrosion to deal with on this board as well. Um, it does work fine, but it's obviously not something great to look at. But if I pop out these two screws, I can fold the board up and you can see that this is definitely a later revision because it uses the uh, encapsula encapsulated uh, chips. So they're basically just the bare dies soldered straight to the board and then covered in a layer of epoxy for protection. It's cheaper to do that, but obviously it, uh, I don't know, it looks kind of sketchy. And um, if there's any issues that need to be fixed, it's pretty much impossible to fix these things. At least if there's any issue with the chip itself. So that's probably why Nintendo doesn't normally do something like that. Okay, so let's set that aside. We'll focus on the front board here. And so the idea is 
I want to see if we can't get this installed using the uh, tabs on the back instead of uh, taping this into the front board. So my idea was if you take the LCD itself, peel off the plastic insulating layer, you can fold up these tabs here and you got to fold them out to about 100 degrees. Remember 90 degrees is square so 100 degrees even wider than square. And then uh, stick the board on. The contacts on both of these connectors go face down. And then you should be able to use these tabs to locate it on this PCB. Now one of my concerns is because you can only use three out of the four tabs, the bottom one might be a little uh, jank, I guess. Uh, so you might have to pay special attention to centering it. But before we get too far, let's test it out. See how it goes. So I'm going to put this in here. And I'm probably not going to get very far because I didn't do any modification. Completely forgot. At the very least, we need to remove some screw posts. Does this thing? No, I already replaced that. Okay. All right. So, like the other one, we need to remove this top support. I'm just going to use flush cutters. is not nearly as clean as I'd hoped it would be. Doesn't need to be perfect, especially since this isn't a clear shell, so no one's going to see it except all thousand or however many views this video gets. But other than that, I mean, once it's all together, no one's going to see it. Then we need to remove these two screw posts. And the instructions say to remove these two screw posts as well, but I really don't think we need to do that. So let's, let's try it out. Uh, this is not going to be easy because I can't flip either over without something falling out. I don't want to bend these tabs just yet, but I think I might have to, just to keep everything together. Okay. And everything seems to go together, so let's try it out. I'm not going to bother putting in all the screws, and by the way, I didn't remove those screw posts, the bottom two, and everything seems to line up, so I think we're good there. I'm just going to do the three screws for now. Here comes my least favorite part. All right, and then that'll go together like that roughly. I'm not gonna bother screwing it together, especially since I haven't trimmed that yet. But let's try it out. Huh? 
and if all went well, it should work perfectly fine, but it won't have any sound. Hmm. Something didn't go well. Something somewhere is not plugged in. Now, you know, I wonder if this just wasn't plugged in all the way, because this is a pain in the butt. Makes me feel like I'm going to break it every single time. This one, by comparison, is significantly easier. There it goes! I guess it just wasn't plugged in all the way. Well, that's my bad. This one's really flickery. I don't... I wonder if it's the uh, DMG. I'm going to swap out DMGs now. Alright. We'll try this one. The one that I wanted to try originally anyway. Before I do, I'm going to swap the batteries in the game. Yeah, see, it's not glitching, nor is it flickering anymore. Interesting. So I wonder if that's something wrong with the DMG itself, or if it's an incompatibility incompatibility with that motherboard revision. I have left button now, too. I can see the picture still doesn't look that great, though. Even if we swap through the pallets. Right. Let's try one more DMG here. This one is that other DMG that I said I didn't want to take apart, and uh, well, I took it apart anyway. But this one is CPU05, so it's right in the middle of the other two. This one in my hand here is a uh, release model, whereas the yellow one is a very late model. This one is right smack dab in the middle. Nothing else, I'm getting better at plugging in this stupid ribbon cable. That doesn't look great either. And 
few of you had questions as to what happens when you press and hold this, and it does the same thing as just a normal press, so... Oops, that was too far. So take a look. Stop that. See, I just changed the palette on the first try. I'm still clicking and holding it, but it's not doing anything else. But now you know. No other tricks or secrets that I know of. Um, okay. So I think the entire problem was that I just didn't have that plugged in right. But now that it is plugged in, let's go ahead and get this installed and see what happens. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to give the camera a few minutes to cool down before it unexpectedly cuts off on me again. I used to be able to get like 20 minutes out of it. Now I seem to be only getting like 16. So, um... Give me a few minutes and uh, we'll pick up where I left off. I'm going to actually solder it to this back PCB. Um, full disclosure, I haven't done this yet, but I have a feeling it's not going to end well. Uh, well, I don't think I'm going to destroy it. I just think uh, taping it into the front half of the shell is going to be easier and work a little bit better. Um, as far as making sure that the screen is centered and, ugh, I lost, oh no, I didn't, okay. So, my method here, the method to my madness, I'm going to go ahead and install a few screws. And... We're just going to hope for the best, I guess. So my concern is that you can see the LCD is not quite centered. Uh, I'm looking at it dead on. I think it's about dead on as far as the camera is concerned. Let me see. Yeah, I'm straight under the lens there. And you can see on the left hand side there, it's kind of, it's, it's not right. Uh, I don't know that there's much we can do about that. So we would need to move it that way. And here's another thing. It's not flush against the front of the shell. Let's see it kind of moving around maybe. I don't know. Between the glare, probably not. I'm thinking I need a flathead screwdriver. Oh, but I don't have my little one. Hmm. I don't know what I did with it. And this probably isn't going to work. No, that's way too big. Um, well, shoot. I do have this nice fancy toolkit here. That's not going to work either. Okay. Uh, I'm thinking if we get the two corners into place, that should be good enough. I don't know how to get that last corner. I think we'll need like a spacer or something to put in between the screen and this backboard. But I don't know what to use. Because if I push on all three tabs at once, I get all three corners except for this last corner that's not going flush against the front shell. That was gross, I'm sorry. Or maybe we can just apply straight pressure to the LCD. But I doubt I can get where I need to get. I need a bigger hole here. Or a tool that actually fits in there. Um, before I get further, I'm actually going to go pause and find a tool. I'll be back in just a second. 
I did not have to look very hard. The second I turned the camera off, I saw my face in a mirror and I'm like, oh, there's a tool right there. And then I found the SIM card ejection tool, which works perfectly. The idea is I'm sticking it in this gap here to push against the LCD itself. And that closes the gap between the PCB and, or the, between the LCD and the front shell. Now, I don't know that there's a whole lot I can do to actually center the screen. I don't think that's going to happen. Because if I try and push it over from the top, it just uh, kind of tweaks over in one direction. But, screw it, let's see what happens. What What's the worst that could possibly happen, you know? I'm literally going to solder this thing in. For the record, I really do not recommend doing this. Oops, I need some tweezers. Really don't want that big solder blob there. I'm afraid to use a lot of flux too, just in case it gets into the piece or the LCD. It'll never come out. Okay. That's better than it was. I think we're good, and because I accidentally used the front board from my other Game Boy, I don't even have to worry about a speaker either. The screen looks like it's in place as good as it's going to be. Obviously, I still got to peel the plastic off. Yeah, so there you go. Nice and firmly attached. I think I need to uh, touch that one up, but... Peel that off. I'm sorry if I did that just out of frame. Because I know how you weirdos like your peels. Okay, and this time I only have two leftover screws. Well, because I actually left those two screw posts intact. 
it seems to work. I'm going to try touching up this joint one more time. So I think I can go down a little bit further. The other ones as is, I think we're good to go. All right, so is this the backboard I want to use? No, it's not. This one is, okay. Let's double check everything still works before going any further. That is so off center. That is terrible. Hmm. I don't know that there's a single thing I can do about that either, especially since I just soldered the screen in. Um, well, there you go. That'll work, but it's not going to be great. something I shouldn't have touched. That's okay though. Well, there you go. Just six more screws and you're home free, but I'll go ahead and do that off camera because that's not very entertaining. Um, I think I'm going to mess around with this a little bit, see if I can't get the screen in a slightly better up and left position. Uh, but otherwise, I guess that's why you want to tape it in and not uh, use the tabs. Otherwise, everything does seem to work. And there's the... Uh, for those who didn't get a good look last time, here are the uh, color palettes. So you got the black and white. Uh, it looks like pink and yellow. Pink and yellow with blue instead of pink and yellow with black. Just blue and varying shades of blue. Green and varying shades of green. Red, red, etc. Yellow, purple and then back to black and white again. And before we get out of here, there's one more test I want to do. I've got my EverDrive in here. Pop the SD out. So it boots straight into my last game. Oh, well shoot. I thought that's what it was supposed to do. I guess not. My uh, knockoff EverDrive does that. That's okay. Actually, the screen being completely off center looks great at the angle that the camera is. At. Not so much what I see, but what the camera sees is nice. Someone had requested that I test this game because it uh, apparently does a lot of flickering, but it seems to work fine on this kit.
and I'm going to go ahead and give myself an excuse <laughs> for when I mess up that, uh, in my defense, I am holding the Game Boy together and trying to play at the same time. But, I don't know, it looks, looks pretty darn good to me. Darn. Part of it is also playing with the uh, camera running. I swear I'm much better at video games when the camera's not on. But such is life. I know you guys don't think any less of me. I'm, I'm embarrassed after that one. All right, so yeah, I'm going to play with this a little bit more. I suppose I'll do an update if I get it working any better. But if I don't, well, then have a good night and thanks for watching. All right, so I think I got it to a point where I'm happy with it. Or at least to a point where it's as good as it's going to get. Uh, I thought this would go in a lot easier. I don't know why I thought that. It's never been easy to get this stupid thing in. Okay, there we go. Anyway, it's a lot of take it apart, put it back together, take it apart, put it back together. Um, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. It's still not perfect. Uh, it looks like I need to tweak it just a hair that way. Um, but... Yeah, that's about as good as it's going to get. It definitely needs to be shifted up a little bit, but you, you just can't with the tabs. Um, so, long story short, I definitely, 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 definitely recommend just taping it into the front of, this, front of the shell. Tabs do work, but let me, let me put it this way. How much is your time worth? All right. But otherwise, I mean, it does work. So... I'll go ahead and put this back together. Everything looks good. And, uh, well, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.